Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to do the weekly uh, tarot horoscope for fire signs, June 3rd to June 10th. That's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We're going to get right into it with the Romance Angel Oracle deck, guys, alright? I'm a Sagittarius myself, if you don't know it, so I love you, fire signs. My moon's in Leo, so there you go. How you guys doing? Alright. How are my lovely fire signs doing today? How's your weekend going? Um, it's the beginning of June, right? So it's heating up on the East Coast where I'm at. So wherever you're at, I hope the weather's good. I hope everything's good. So, Romance Angels, give me three cards for our Aries, Leos, and Sagittarius. We want to see what they're going through this week. What's the nature of their relationships this week? Right? <clears throat> the main forces that are driving them this week. Show me. June 3rd to the 10th for the fire signs. Show me. All right, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Aries, your card is attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. It's the law of attraction, enjoying yourself, enjoying your life. Being in the moment, not being concerned about those around you, it brings love and attraction towards you. Children, for Leo, your love life is being affected by children. All right. <clears throat> Sometimes this card comes out for immature relationships, new relationships, young relationships. Sagittarius, reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Man. Sagittarius has been getting this damn card for months. How long is it going to take for this person to show up? All right. Soulmate energy. Yes, this is your soulmate. All right. Yeah, this card's been coming up for Sagittarius a lot. Me being Sagittarius, I look at a lot of readings for Sagittarius's. And it's like, man, okay, they're coming in. But uh, seems to be something keeps popping up, right? All right. So, fire sign. Soulmate energy at the bottom. So, that means... At the heart of everything going on this week, it's all about soulmate energy, right? It's all about relationships that are meant to be, that have been before, etc., etc. So, let's get some cards out for you guys. Give me a clear reading for our lovely fire signs, Aries and Sagittarius. For this week, June 3rd, to the 10th. We want to know what they're going through. All right. The overall energies that they're dealing with. This is a general reading. Could be about love. Could be about career, relationships of any kind. Money. I'll just start with our lovely Aries Leo Sagittarius today. Make it clear. Make it concise. Show me affirmations and warnings. Show me. Guys, here we go. All right, Aries, you got your first card. Oh, upside down. Your first card, Seven of Pentacles. Hmm. Interesting. Princess, uh, High Priestess, two in the Major Arcana, and Nine of Wands. Wow. Hmm, reevaluating your dreams, Aries, huh? Somebody come into your life that's very magical. All right, Leo, Eight of Pentacles. So you're working away, aren't you? You're busy, you're working, you're trying to make your money. Five of Cups, there's been some heartache, right? And Five of Pentacles, two fives, wow. A lot of strife for you right now, a lot of heartache. But it's all about you finding your limitations with that eight there. Sagittarius, five again, Hierophant. A lot of fives here. Page of Cups. And Knight of Swords. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. At the bottom of the deck, we have Four of Cups. So you guys are waiting. You're holding on. Four of Cups talks about stability and relationships, wanting stability and relationships, right? I love this card because it's like, um, 
again, you know, he's looking at the cup. It's coming out the, out the cloud there. He's like, okay, but guess what? That looks like all the other cups I had before, and I haven't been satisfied with those either. Show me more, right? So this is the card when you've had enough of accepting relationships that are not up to scratch, when you've decided to set criteria for yourself, you've decided to be more discerning. You're not willing to just take any old cup that comes your way for the sake of it because it's coming your way. You realize that it's not worth it. And so now you're starting to decide that, hey, hang on a second, show me more than just the cup. What am I getting with this cup? What kind of relationship am I looking forward to? Because I want something with some stability, some longevity, some, you know, maturity. All right. So Aries, seven of pentacles, you're just working away, but you're looking back and you're saying, wow, you know, is this really what I want for my life? You're kind of reviewing seven being the number for, for wishes, right? Wishes, dreams, hopes, uh, visions for yourself, you know, um, desires, right? Aspirations, surprises also. So it's like, what are your aspirations? You know, you see the character, he's looking back on what he's grown and he's kind of surve surveying the territory, right? Is he happy with those particular pentacles? <coughs> Excuse me. And so, you know, it's kind of the fruits of your labor. Are you happy with the fruits that your labor has produced? And sometimes this card comes up when you start, when you're in a, at a point of reevaluating your life. High Priestess has come in and Nine of Wands, so it's been a battle. Right, but high priestesses and high priestess is a very magical kind of person, feminine energy, but harsh. Right, the high priestess actually falls on the pillar of severity. All right, so, and that's in the tree of life for those of you, uh, tree of life in Kabbalah. The the two the two the high priestess falls on the pillar of severity, so she she you can see that in the in the card right. I mean she's a staunch character right she has deep wisdom and insight you know because of everything that she's learned everything she's paid attention to she has a crescent moon at her feet showing she has dominion over her deeper darker side she has dominion over the night in terms of uh that kind of the mystical side uh the esoteric side the mysticism uh you know all of that you know occultism right she has she has dominion over that she understands that inside out She's transmuted that energy within herself. And so she kind of sees what has been, what is now and the future to come because of all of her wisdom. But she is, she, you know, she will, she's there to help, but you have to come and ask for it. You know, she's very regal. She's not there to just throw her wisdom. You know, it's not pearls before swine here, right? She will open up to you, but you have to kind of want to seek her out and want to seek her knowledge out. So in terms of an energy, you have to want this, you know, if you're trying to cultivate this energy inside yourself, it's something you have to truly, really, truly want and work for, right? So this isn't just buying some crystals and like, you know, reciting something you've read, read somewhere. This is studying and learning and paying attention and looking in the mirror and crying and going through difficult times and transmuting energy and doing things you don't want to do all the time, but doing them for your higher good. So all of that is involved with how she got to where she is. So she's a very strong character. She can also represent someone that you're attracted to. This can be someone that you seem that you see is very elusive in a way. Like you can't figure out why you're so attracted to them. They have an extremely magical quality about them. You know, they they kind of exude this kind of not pixie-like or fairy-like, but this kind of real mature, like, um, magical quality, magical feminine quality. It could be that some of you are in love with somebody who's exuding this kind of energy. But I see more that this is you, Aries. I believe this is you. You're going into your spiritual side because you've been looking back on your life and you've also gone through quite a lot of battles lately been a lot of battles, a lot of bumps and bruises. You've made it. You're leaning on your last staff there, right? The nine of one. The nine of pentacles talks about, you know, nine's, nine's is, nine is the number of your relationship to yourself. And it's kind of like, you know, you did it, but you did it on your own. You did it without any help. You've been through a lot of battles and there hasn't been any help, right? You're surveying the wands, which are kind of your trophies from your battles. 
maybe even looking back on some of them that have been quite traumatic, but you have survived and here you are. And not, you know, <clears throat> not less any bruises, you know, uh, but they're kind of as well, like, you know, your, your badges in a way, the badges, you know, your scars are your badges, aren't they? Your, they're your medals in a way of having gone through a fight, a real fight, you know. Um, and this is for a kind of on a very, on a creative level, on a level in terms of like your, your, your soul, your, your personality, um, battling with people, you know, this is not necessarily to say a physical battle, like actually hurting someone, but this is just a battle, many times a battle of wills, right? And, in, and ensuring that you come out, you know, that you don't lose yourself. So I think you're going through a really in introspective period and it's making you obviously very attractive to others, but I don't see you this week necessarily reaching out in any romantic way. I feel like this week is a real, this week for you, Aries, is going to be a real week of self-reflection, right? A real week of going into yourself and trying to see, you know, where am I at in my life? Am I happy with what I've accomplished? Do I need to make adjustments to my vision or my goal? Um, some of you may have not been so um, spiritual and starting to find you're coming into a period in your life where you're, you're starting to look into that more. Uh, you feel like perhaps you need to, you know, investigate or research your spiritual side more to get a better understanding of it <clears throat> because of all of these battles that you've been through. Could be a way of synthesizing a lot of this um a lot of the experience you've acquired. Now, if you go into your high priestess energy, it's kind of synthesizing that experience into your wisdom. Right? You have to synthesize your experience into yourself and incorporate it, absorb it into your soul and your, and, and your spirit, your personality, your characteristics, right? Soul and spirit being slightly different. Um, but you have to incorporate those in order to have that evolvement, in order to have that transcendence, right, on a spiritual level. So I think it's a very spiritual week for you, a very deep week of self-reflection, Aries. Leo, your week, children, is the card that came out from the angel, romance angels. But you're working, eight of pentacles, you're working away, working away, working away. It's almost as if you don't want to look up. It's been a lot of pain lately, Leo. You've been you've been through a lot of pain, and I think you're working is your your way of kind of dealing with it. Realizing, I think you're also realizing that you know you need to be working on your money. Um, <clears throat> if if other areas in your life aren't working out, then at least in your money you need to be up, right? You've had a period of heartbreak. A lot of relationships haven't worked out. There's a glimmer of hope, of course, because you still have the two cups that are upright. So it's not so much that there is no relationship out there for you. But fives, interesting you have two fives. Fives being the card, fives being the number for strife and more, more, more significantly than strife, power struggle. Specifically power struggles. Okay. So five of cups is kind of almost a power struggle with yourself not to indulge in self-pity, not to wallow. This is a case of wallowing to a certain degree because he has two cups here showing that there are possibilities there for him that he can see or she can see if she would just look up from her wallowing long enough to see them. So this is um, this is a this is a, a form of a power struggle within yourself to not um, despair. You know, to not despair. You know, to not fall into despair. To lift yourself up, to not fall into uh, over sentimentality or self pity, which is a form of despair. Same thing here with Five of Pentacles. Again, very kind of like sad figures. They've been ousted, abandoned, right? Ostracized by their community, right? And uh, they're on their own. And Five of Pentacles is about that as well. It's about, you know, having having had struggles with your community and your people and having then therefore resulted in separation and abandonment you're no longer together absolute chaos to complete complete disharmony but again there's a glimmer of hope in this card too because the light shines through the five pentacles matching also the color in their dress the gold color and it shows you it's kind of like i was saying because this card came up in the last um reading for or the earth signs um i compare it to kind of like you know 
when you kick somebody out your house and you don't, when you get rid of somebody or you don't want somebody in your house, you, you kick them out and you turn, you shut the door, you turn the lights off. You know what I mean? Or like on a Halloween when you didn't want the kids to knock on your door, you turn the lights off, right? You lock the door, you turn the lights off. Nobody's home. That's like the epitome of we have nothing for you. But when the lights are still on, you know, and this is some of the symbolism of the imagery, is that there is always still a glimmer of hope that they can possibly come back through reconciliation, through discussion, or through some other, some means, there is hope, right, for them to come back from this. It is not a permanent, you know, um, it's not a permanent exile, right? There is, there is a road home, there is a way home. But right now there's separation, there's hardship, there's pain, and there's a feeling of being left out in the cold, being certainly separated from the others. Um, abandoned, right? So you've really felt like this lately, and I think you've been throwing yourself in your work, Leo, for the sake of your children. Some of you may have children. Some of you may have been in a situation where you're going, some of you may be going through a separation or a divorce where you're missing your children. You may be getting separated from them in some way because of all of this hardship that's showing here, and you're realizing that this Eight of Pentacles is necessary for you to stay focused and to work and to continue doing what you need to do to increase your wealth and your abundance so that you can fix this situation. Ultimately, this is a five of pentacles, even though it, it seems to signify a church, right, because of the um, <clears throat> stained glass. It is a pentacle card, so it is in the realm of wealth and finances and material possessions. So it's not that you're being ousted from a spiritual, uh, uh, you know, point of view. You're being separated in a financial way, right? So you're being abandoned and left destitute. That's why the two characters are more destitute looking than anything. Um, it's not like they've lost their faith in, in their God necessarily, but they have lost their attachment to this abundance here. It's cut off. So this is also very much uh, the ousting, the abandonment on a material level. It's like when you, the sun is cut off or cut out the will or when you've gone through a divorce and, and from someone you were married to for years and they just took everything and left you completely de destitute. Things like that. When you've been thrown out of your home as a teenager, you know, because you're a wild teenager, but now here you are on the street. Right, and you don't have enough money to survive. So this is the nature of the ousting. And so that's why it makes perfect sense that you have here an eight of pentacles, because you're you're gonna get your you getting you get you're on your game. And you need you know you need to step your game up so you don't have to be subject to this again. Right? At the mercy of others for your livelihood. All right. And again, it certainly could have been tied to a relationship. You know, the relationship broke down. And now, you know, and as a result, your finance and your status broke down. But this is a week of working and children. So it's interesting. It could be real. Your children could be also new relationships coming in as a result of this working. But I would just say that the message here is stay on your grind, Leo. Stay on your grind. Things will work out. Eight of Pentacles is absolutely the right attitude to, uh, to take in this scenario. It is the right attitude to take. It allows you not to continue wallowing in this in this uh, misery, excuse me, here, which can be almost debilitating. And it, and it allows you to get yourself into a situation where you're no longer at, in, in this environment or this scenario or at the mercy of people, which is what these these figures are here, right? This, this work is going to take you out of this situation. So if that's what you're doing, Leo, I think you're doing absolutely the right thing. Go forward. I think it's a reaffirmation, that reading. A reaffirmation for those of you who are in that situation that you are indeed doing the right thing. All right. Um, as for Sagittarius, reconciliation. Again, Sagittarius, it almost seems like you've always got reconciliation coming up at some point. Who are all these people who keep getting pissed off? Five of Another five here in fact. Excuse me, I have to light something. The Hierophant here is, interestingly enough, right, fives, again, being the card of power struggle, right? Being the numbers, the number for power struggle. And ultimately, people see that as the number for strife. But 
you know, power struggles are inherent in all relationships, right? In all human relationships. The first five being the Hierophant. He is the ultimate word of God here on earth. Interestingly enough, he has two figures bowed down in front of him and their worship to God. So the Hierophant talks about your commitment to your beliefs, your spiritual center, your morals, your conscience, you know, all of those things that are godly and spiritual inside of you that you hold dear, your concept of right and wrong. But moreover, the dogma associated, the customs and dogma, you know, the way you believe things should be done, the, you know, the religious aspect of it, the working of it, the day-to-day -day practice, right? Um, how, how committed you are to that. It can also come up when there's marriage. It can come up when there's talk of marriage, right? So reconciliation coming up with the Hierophant, it could be that, um, you know, it could be that you had some loyalty to an individual at one point and that fell apart and, and now you're being kind of pulled back because of that loyalty, you know, because of that, you know, it may be that this person may kind of play on that. Um, it could also mean, you know, in terms of relationships, what are you willing to settle for? You know, what are you willing to adhere to? What are your beliefs and relationships? Relationships change and your beliefs and relationships change too. How you see yourself and how you see those that you become involved with changes throughout the course of your life. Hopefully it changes. I don't want to pick the same guys at 45 that I picked when I was 15. <laughs> you know what I mean? So and hopefully it changes and it matures and it gets closer and closer to the right person for you. Truly the right, most healthy, positive uh, person for you. The one that you're kind of meant to be with, right? So, you know, it can be like, you know, a time for you to reevaluate that. Reevaluate some of those systems that you have used to choose people, to choose to be in relationships. You know, your belief system, what, what you've believed your, you know, all this time to be the case, it may be time for you to reevaluate that. And it may be as a result of a reconciliation coming through. This reconciliation might be a real surprise to you and it may question your belief system because up until now, perhaps your belief system made it such that you felt the reconciliation would never be possible. So sometimes when a reconciliation happens out of the blue, happens in a scenario that you don't expect, it does kind of shake your system in terms of what you always thought to be true, especially about people and about the way people behave and do things, right? So page of, and there are reasons for them. Page of Cups is coming in. So certainly you're getting someone coming in forward with a little token of love, a message of love. Somebody's coming, you know, and then here you got Knight of Swords and somebody's coming in hard, right? Somebody's coming in hard and fast with a message. These two are separate, I believe. And I think this week, both of these are going to test your belief system, Sagittarius. The Page of Cups coming, that uh, that token of love or, or affection or just a little flirtation is going to be coming from an unexpected place, I believe, or a place, you know, of possible reconciliation. And then as well, um, separate to that, you're going to have some very important information coming to you this week. Very important information, Sagittarius, could be legal information, could be something to do with a job, a new offer, a new project, but whatever it is, it's coming in like fast and hard. You see that Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords cuts through all the bullshit. The Knight of Swords is the, the great clarifier, the great rectifier, the one that comes in when it's time to cut through all the nonsense and get to the bottom of a scenario. He's the one that shows up with uh, when there's, oftentimes when the Justice card shows up, uh, the Knight of Swords will also show up when you're coming to the end of a legal affair, right? So you've got two major, one kind of cute thing happening this week and one major thing happening this week. But both of these things are going to come from a place or to do a person or place or to do with a scenario here that is going to <clears throat> really affect how you feel about certain, you know, it's going to affect your belief systems. What you always held to be true may not always be true. Could be that you've always been a pessimist and disinformation coming through is like the first time you've gotten some good news and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, this can actually happen, 
right? Or it could be that you held something to be true. You were sure about something and then something someone else, or you were sure you would never speak to someone ever, ever again because it was just so bad. And now all of a sudden this person is texting you. I want to talk. You know what I mean? And it's that kind of thing where you're going to be like this whole, like your whole, your whole what you held to be true is going to be definitely called into question. And <clears throat> how you react to these is going to be to do with this as well. Are you going to react the way you normally do, right? Or are you going to adjust, you know? I wouldn't be surprised if the tower card came up. All right, so let's clarify with the Thelema deck. And then we'll call it a day. Delima, give me some clarity on our lovely fire signs for this reading. We're at 25 minutes. I don't want it to be too long. But I decided I wanted to give a little bit more in-depth on these readings. Because it is for the week and for three whole signs. So, Alright, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. I like to do the readings this way also. Because oftentimes uh, signs will have... Complementary signs in your chart, like I am a Sagittarius, but I have a moon rising. I mean, a moon Leo, excuse me, a moon in Leo. So, you know, it's nice to have a reading about fire signs because I can take what resonates from Leo and what resonates from Sagittarius for me as well. So that's why I like to do the weekly readings this way. Give me a clarity on these readings for my lovely fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius for this week. Help me understand a little better, a little deeper, what they're going through and what these cards signify for them this week. So that we can get them to their highest good. Show me. Show me. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, June 3rd to the 10th. Aries, here we go with your clarity cards. Ten of Wands, wow. Coming on the back of that Knight of Wands. It's your progression. Page of Wands. A lot of passion this week. Aries, definitely feeling very passionate. Leo, King of Cups. And the Wheel, wow. Interesting. Sagittarius, Four of Pentacles. Stability in, in, in Finance. The Six of Wands. Oh. All right. Bottom of the deck. We have Ace of Cups. So new love. New love coming in. Good. I love this because this fits in perfectly with Soulmate and the Four of Cups. Waiting for love. That's, that's the right kind of love. Right? Doesn't preclude new love. You know, Ace of Cups is, is you know, it's not going to be a cup of shit. You know, it's not going to be a cup of garbage, right? It's a cup of new love. It's outpouring love, right? You know, right? So there is certainly that there. And that's, you know, indicative of that is the feeling that, wow, you know, there's, there's substance here. <clears throat> right? More substance than what is here coming in that cup. This cup, this cup has nothing coming out of it. Literally nothing in it. So it's a mystery if anything is in it at all. Ace of Cups at least denotes an outpouring of, of genuine love, especially there with the dove above. All right, so Ten of Wands, yeah. You know, you're making it over the finish line. You're making it over the finish line, Aries. You're ready to move on. It's been a long battle, right? Nine of Wands, it's been a long battle. You're reevaluating and you're ready to move on to a different life. You're ready to move on to something totally different. Ten of Wands. Look at all those wands he's collected in his bag, but yet he's in the dirt searching for something totally, totally different. Right? It's talking about completion. Ten of Wands is completion. You've completed that last cycle of struggle. Uh, that last cycle of through the wands. You're now to a whole new different level and you it's like you have a completely different um objective in mind and that makes sense with the seven of discs up here talking about reevaluating your vision your goals you know and page of wands so there's going to be a meeting somebody's going to come in page of wands comes in with a with a message of kind of like eh, you know we've got an idea you know like a 
a passionate message, right? It's like a passion, a passionate message to something that needed to be said, that needed to be, um, uh, that you needed to be notified of type of thing, you know, raise your attention to, you know, it's kind of the, like the little alarm that comes through. All right. So there's some kind of communication or some kind of meeting that's, that's going to come in and it's going to be kind of like, um, Peaking your attention, right? It's gonna get your attention. It's gonna get your passion up a little bit. Like, hmm, what's going on here? It's gonna get your curiosity up a little bit, <clears throat> and that could be as well to do with this attraction. It could be that you're gonna run into somebody almost like by accident on purpose, perhaps from their side, right, or whatever. But somehow, like this small kind of like <clears throat> passionate kind of communication here, or coming together, right? This kind of it's not major, it's not the night, but it's the page, right? So it's a little kind of like ship passing or two people meeting and then maybe like, oh, hi, how are you? Boom, boom. And then that's it type of thing, right? It's going to be, you know, it's not necessarily enduring. It's like a flash in a pan, but it's attraction. It could be that spark that starts off the attraction with someone. It could be with someone new as well, Aries, since you have new love here. The Ace of Cups for everyone. All right, Leo, King of Cups and Wheel of Fortune. So, yeah, you're buckling down, right? But like I said, both of these have, a, interestingly enough, think about what I said earlier. In both of these, there is a glimmer of hope. The Two of Cups here and the light from uh, the window here to suggest there's a light where you can find your way back, right? These cards seem to suggest, in each case, almost like the... Um, the next incarnation of that hope. So King of Cups is coming in. King of Cups is someone who comes in with commitment. He wants to lock it down. He wants you to be his wife. He wants to be married. He wants to, you know. He may not be the most romantic one, like the Knight of Cups comes in very romantic and hot and heavy, you know, but he's not very committed. The King of Cups is very committed and stable, right? And he's looking. He's looking up and forward, right? And he comes out to clarify the five of cups. This is your this is your glimmer of hope. This is your, if you look up to see the other possible cups, this is one of them. There is someone there for you. Same thing here. Wheel of Fortune talks about prosperity. Opportunities, they come in for prosperity. The Wheel of Fortune. Here it's just called the Wheel, but it's the Wheel of Fortune. Fortuitous. Fortunate. Not the wheel. It's not called the wheel of the unfortunate. It's, you know, or the in unfortunate, you know, unfortunate. It's the, it's the wheel of fortune. So when the wheel turns, you know, you get prosperity. You get fortunate incidents. You get things that bring you fortune, that bring you health, wealth, vitality, positivity, growth. Here again, where I said before, you have a five of pentacles being separated from your money, your growth being destitute. Here you go. The wheel is now turning for you. That glimmer has turned. This is the um, this is sort of the um, <clears throat> not. I don't even want to say the reincarnation, but almost the evolution of this glimmer of hope is like it's now exalted into the wheel of fortune. And I think all of this is coming. This is coming because you're persevering through with this Eight of Pentacles energy. You're working, 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 working. Which is, you know, you're working. Eights being the numbers of the number for limitations and boundaries. Realizing that you may need certain boundaries and limitations right now to remain focused and to work forward to a to a life that's going to get you out of whatever misery and un, this misfortune. <clears throat> that's the word. It's not the wheel of misfortune, it's the wheel of fortune. So whatever misery or misfortune that you've had before, working through now is going to bring you this. And I think this week you're going to start to get signs of that because this is why the clarity is here. Hopefully you will get signs of that. Uh, reaffirmations coming in. If not, they will be coming soon. And remember, the eight, of one, the eight of Pentacles here reminds us to persevere, persevere, and keep going. Even if you don't see the spark just yet, it will come through, the benefits. All right, Sagittarius, four of Pentacles and six of Wands. So, yeah. Wow. Reconciliation, four of Pentacles. Right? It talks about um, stability. Right, stability and finance, but it can also talk about being miserly, hiding away your money, being afraid that somebody's going to take what you've already had, what you already uh, have made. 
I think finances have, and I think your finances have really taken center stage lately, Sagittarius, and a lot of the readings, your desire to up your game, to up your, um, to up your level, right? To up your status, to up your abundance, to up your wealth, your standard of living, your, your, you know, your disposable income, all of that, right? To increase that has been really on your radar lately, right? And I think that you're being very protective of it. And that could be also one of the reasons why it talks about reconciliation. Some of the reasons why you may be needing reconciliation is that you may have separated yourself from people just to protect what you already have. It can be also that you're just really more concerned working on this, working on your money right now. You're just not concerned about relationships per se, <clears throat> right? It's just not something that's on your radar. So it could be, so it's quite interesting that this page of cups and this knight of swords is going to come in like I said it's really going to make you reevaluate the way you've already, always um felt things should be, right? Reevaluate the belief systems that you adhere to, Sagittarius. But <clears throat> interestingly enough, right? They will also, I think, start to make you be more concerned about your finances, holding on to your finances. Because now we have every suit represented. We have cups, swords, pentacles, and wands. So it's almost as if, you know, on every level, you're being tested here. You're finding a bit of a power struggle in love and communication with someone here in finances and here in your vision, your goals for your life, right? Here's a little bit of a victory, right? So this is a bit of a victory you got coming in. Could be that you're finally getting a victory on a front where you've had to do a lot of battling, you've had a lot of um, arguments, right? Remember I said earlier also, Knight of Swords could be coming in to rectify a legal issue, right? To bring information about a legal issue. Again, there's victory. Six of Wands shows victory. And as Six of Wands talks about victory that other people see. So this could very much be a legal issue coming to a close with victory for you and being redeemed in the, in the, in the eyes of those around you, your peers around you, right? So that's your clarity on that. So again, this is going to be right. Like some really, um, this information or this, this victory coming through is, I think it's really going to make you question what you always held to be true. You know, it could have been like, you know, the underdog never wins. And maybe this time the underdog does win. Do you see what I'm saying? That kind of questioning. Same thing with your money situation here, right? This page of cups, this little offer, right? You're still kind of like, yeah, all right. You know, somebody's come through, they've piqued my interest. Let me, you know, and this character, you see, I see this character, right? She's kind of snuck out of the castle, right? To go out into the field and check on her little pot of gold, right? Her pot of gold that she has, um, she's either had it out there buried or she took it with her. She was in, you know, she got it from somewhere where it was hidden, but she didn't want to open it in the castle. She didn't want to open it in front of anybody else. She's gone out somewhere totally isolated to open it up, right? So <clears throat> a lot of people say four of pentacles is the miser card, but it's not, it's even more than that. It's not so much the miser card, but it's almost like the fear of losing what you have, the fear, the, the need to hide it for fear of losing it, for fear of losing your stability, right? If you hide something away like this, first of all, you don't want anybody to find it. It's very important to you. But the fact that you need to come back to look at it every now and again, it's a reaffirmation. It's something that um, clearly uh, assuages anxiety, right? I imagine this character gets anxious if she doesn't come out and look at her pot of gold every now and again, her pot of coins. So it's a lot deeper than just being a miser. It's a fear of losing what you've worked for, however little it is. It could just simply be four little coins in a, in a box, but it's precious to you. And again, <clears throat> I think that's just a general concern that, that you're going to be dealing with this week as a result of this specific um, um, message of affection or love coming through. I think, Sagittarius, recently you've had a lot of issues with relationships where you've perhaps given too much of yourself or you found yourself in a situation where 
the relationship hasn't worked out so great, but it's also impacted you in some way financially. Either it's made you spend too much money hanging out, or it's made you spend too much money on your person, or it's made you spend money on promises that you and your person had, or that uh, uh, like uh, hopes and dreams you guys said, oh, we are gonna do this together, and then your person dipped, and here you lost all this money, right? So you have a little bit of baggage about that, and I feel like every time somebody comes in for you now, or, or offers you any kind of love, it's almost as if, this character is like, oh, okay, I'll get right back to you. I'll answer you in a minute. She runs back and checks, you know, her little pot of gold. Be like, okay, I still got it. You know, if he breaks my heart, I at least still have this. I at least still have what I need to get up and go forward. Right? It's a it's strange message, I, I know, but it's, it's quite specific. You know, it's a feeling. You know, it's that feeling. And I hope this resonates with some of you. But it is... It's the anxiety that we get. Sometimes, you know, when pe especially in love relationships, when people come and offer us a relationship or an interaction or affection in some way or a communication of a, a token of affection, we can have a lot of unexpected um, responses. And depending on the baggage we have from previous relationships, sometimes our responses can seem as if they're completely unrelated. Why does money have anything to do with that? But it can be, you know, the fear of um, letting your passion and your lust for someone, your optimism for a possible relationship run away with you. And then Sagittarius, we are naturally generous. So we will give our last $5 to somebody. So it can, relationships and our, you know, livelihood can really impact each other. You know, a fucked up relationship can fuck up a Sagittarius' money that fast. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, and I think you Sagittarius is out there who re resonate with that. You know exactly what I mean. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave it there. 41 minutes. That's how long the last one was. It's just a little bit longer than usual. But I wanted to give you a little bit more insight, a little bit more clarity and depth. I hope this resonates with you guys. If it does, you know what to do. And for now, I'm just going to say thank you so much to everybody who's liked, subscribed, and shared so far. Have a wonderful week. Fire signs. Bye-bye.